ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to a little political video. I don't do these very often anymore. I understand people don't like it. It is kind of annoying, but I just do one of these a month. I figure kind of weed back, do my official 2024 election prediction, the October surprise preview. We are 13 months away. It is next November, not this November, but I'm also going to be doing an election prediction one year before the election, so it'll be early next November. I'm going to be doing that as well, but guys, let's give some context to this official prediction. Right now, we are going with the matchup of Trump versus Biden. It is still the current favorite, possibly the rematch. We were wondering maybe DeSantis comes in. It was looking good for him early on. He delays the announcement. He goes off with that weird X announcement. It was a bust. And now uh, DeSantis clearly pulling significantly behind Trump. So you can take a look at just the overall you know, average right now between Trump and Biden. This is just the popular vote. Extremely good news for Trump plus uh, 1.1, although there is a bit of an outlier poll. Obviously, Trump is not leading by 10. You know, that's ridiculous. What was that, an ABC poll? Yeah, that, that made some headlines. It got some people stirring, but I do think independent people in this country are starting to wake up and, and really realize it's just a, a charade with Biden. You know, it's obvious if you vote for Biden in 2020, 24, you're clearly not voting for him in terms of him doing much of anything. The guy cannot formulate a sentence. He can't talk. Obviously, he's not going to be impacting the government in any way. He is just a shill uh, and a political pawn for the Democrats to use. Even Democrats admit that. That's why we might be seeing Gavin Newsom take over, although that's another story for another day. And then you can see the betting average. So who is the current favorite to be president in 2024? It's very close between Trump and Biden, but Trump has gone up a little bit recently. Biden's approvals are horrible. Trump's approvals are we're actually better than Biden's currently are, which is pretty remarkable considering how bad a lot of the Democrats made Trump out to be. And then you've got Gavin Newsom kind of moving up a little bit, kind of a weird color. What even color is that light navy blue? The Gavin Newsom at, at around 9%. And then you do have Michelle Obama at 5.5%. It's not surprising. I mean, you know, with the whole thing right now, Michelle Obama, you would think she would be one of the top candidates for the Democrats. She's a woman. Uh, she's a minority. She checks every box. Barack won twice. Uh, but we don't know if she really wants to run. And then you do have uh, Kennedy RFK very likely running as an independent, you know, the Democrats, they're not going to go for him at this point. We'll see what RFK can do as an independent. I don't think he'll have a crazy impact. It's not like he's going to swing any Trump voters. And then you can see DeSantis falling way back. Nikki Haley, kind of the establishment Republican choice. It's interesting. Nikki Haley is crushing Biden in general election polls, but very unlikely she's going to be the Republican nominee. Uh, Vivek has really fallen back. He's very young. And, you know, it's unfortunate for him. And then you do have Kamala Harris. It's not going to be her. There's no way. Even if Biden drops dead today, uh, Kamala is not going to be the choice in 2024. She'll finish out the term and, and then it'll probably be Newsom if that were to happen. But guys, let's get to the official Trump-Biden matchup. Let's assume this is what it's going to be. There is the rumors right now about Trump, you know, what's happening with all of the legal proceedings. I'm sure the Democrats are really going to heat that up as we get closer to the election, but I'm just going to roll through this. So obviously Washington, Oregon, I'm just going to do dark blue. There's just no way Trump is winning either of those states or really any Republican is. Same thing with California. Uh, there's no way. Moving out of the Trump states, you've got Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, North and South Dakota. You have Nebraska. So one of the districts in Nebraska l was leaning Biden and, and actually went Biden in 2020. I'm going to give Trump every single one in 2024, considering the one district Trump lost. He only lost by about seven points. And, and with the current direction of these polls, the general election polls we're seeing, I think it's fairly safe to give Trump that one. Uh, we're going to hold off on Nevada for now. Utah is Trump. Uh, Colorado, certainly Biden. It swung to the left pretty significantly recently over the past four or five election cycles. Biden probably going to win that by 10 to 12 points. New Mexico is Biden. 
Uh, moving back on Arizona, we'll come back to. I'm just going to do these ones really quickly. The two at the bottom, Hawaii and Alaska. Trump. Get, although it is interesting. Do you guys remember in 2020, Alaska was, was like Trump only led it by seven points and they wouldn't call it? Oh, that's the other thing I wanted to talk about. Can we please, for the love of God, make sure we know the winner at like 2 or 3 a.m. Eastern time? Please. What we had in 2020... You could say, oh, it's because of the pandemic. We can't have that again. We cannot sit there and wait for five days. And, and oh, the, we, we all go to bed at 2 a.m. Trump's got like a 70% chance to win via Vegas betting odds. And we all wake up. Surprise! It's a mirror. I'm not going to get into that. But I, I'm not saying Biden cheated, folks. But it was funny. It's like we all wake up. It's a Christmas miracle. Joe Biden leads every swing state. I'm not saying they cheated. I'm not saying that. But let's be honest, that's what happened. Um, either way, next moving on to Texas. So you, you saw Hillary get a little excited about Texas in 2016. Maybe it would flip. Didn't happen. 2020, it was very similar to 2016. Yes, there are more liberals moving into Texas. No, that state is not going to change this quickly. Maybe if this continues with all these liberals moving away from California and into Texas, fleeing the high taxes, we might see Texas become a swing state in 2032 two at the earliest. That's what, that would be my prediction on that. Kansas and Oklahoma, Trump states, uh, all the SEC states going to be going for Trump outside of Georgia. We'll get to that. Um, you also do have Tennessee, Missouri, Iowa, which was kind of a swing state, uh, but really it's more of a Republican state. And same thing with Minnesota. People like to say Minnesota is kind of a swing state. No, it, it's more liberal. Uh, you've got the Rust Belt. We're going to go through that. Uh, let me just do this. Illinois, definitely Biden. All these dimple states outside of New Hampshire, I would say 1,000% Biden. Call them nice little dimple states. Oh, you know what? No, Trump's going to win the District of Columbia. Yeah. Imagine. What is Biden going to... The Democrat wins the District of Columbia by like 90 points or something. Yeah, they should do polls in that and, and see how much. Uh, but Trump's going to win Indiana. I don't know, man. Trump is enemies with Mike Pence. Mike Pence has got to protect Indiana. Mike Pence is going to run as an independent and then win Indiana. Imagine Kentucky, West Virginia. Uh, Virginia is very interesting. I'm going to leave Virginia alone for now. Certainly, I'm, I'm not saying Trump has a, you know, a crazy high chance, but we saw Glenn Youngkin. We see what the general election polls are saying right now. So I'm going to leave Virginia alone. Uh, and then you've got a state like South Carolina. That's going to go for Trump for sure. North Carolina, that is a swing state. I mean, Trump won it in 2016 and 2020, but it was close. Ohio is not a swing state anymore. Trump has won it by eight points the last two election cycles. That's huge for the Republicans in terms of their math. And then also the other major one, and they can really thank DeSantis for this. I mean, the, the Republican migration to Florida if you guys remember the Electoral College map in 2016 and 2020, it had both Ohio and Florida as swing states, which just opened up so many possibilities for the Democrats. Now that both of those are closed up, and in part thanks to DeSantis, I mean, DeSantis won by 20 points. He was an incumbent, but still, in 2022, the midterms, it was impressive, um, and now that state is just fully Republican at this point. Uh, I will go ahead and give Virginia to Biden, but I do think it's going to be pretty close. And that could be like a Georgia situation where, I'll be honest, in 2020, I thought there was no way that the Democrats would win Georgia. And then they run up all those massive numbers in inner cities. We're going to talk about Georgia in a little bit. You do have New York. Obviously, Biden, the Democrats, going to win that. And then New Hampshire and Maine. Uh, to me, I think both candidates will split these. I'm going to give Trump New Hampshire and then one delegate there. And then I'm going to give Biden the other uh, delegates and, and, and let him win Maine right there. So that's how I think that's going to split up. But who knows, dude? I'm just, I'm just making crap up when it comes to Maine and New Hampshire. I do think they're going to be relatively close, though. And with the current trends, with the, uh, you know, popular vote polls we've seen, it's certainly been in the favor of Trump. So now we have the three Rust Belt states. You have North Carolina, you've got Georgia, you have Nevada and Arizona, and you've got a very close race. And this is what it's going to come down to, guys. We understand this at this point. So when it comes to the Rust Belt, I do think Biden at this point probably still carries Michigan. I think Trump takes Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, although both of those states, Wisconsin, I feel right now pretty safe for Trump. It just feels more Republican to me. 
Uh, Michigan feels a little bit more Democrat. Pennsylvania is a pure toss-up. I'm just leaning Trump based on recent polling, uh, and especially just the whole charade with Biden. I, I, I don't know if they're going to go with Biden or not, but you know, it's not like his health is going to get better. You, you're not going to get better the older you get, so he's going to continue to, to deteriorate and I just don't see independent people buying into that. And then North Carolina, we're going to give to Trump again. Actually, I forgot to color code this. Uh, you know what? We'll, we'll just stick with the dark colors. That's fine. I, I mean, it really doesn't matter. And then when it comes to Nevada, Arizona, and Georgia, I think Trump retakes Georgia at this point. And then Arizona, Nevada, I do think Biden wins ne uh, Arizona and Trump wins Nevada. Although that's a little bit anecdotal. It really doesn't matter. So I've got it at 291 to 247. You know, would this be different with Gavin Newsom? Would they have a better chance? You know, certainly Gavin Newsom can argue better. At least Gavin Newsom can talk and, and he does have good cognitive function. So that's a step up from Biden. But Gavin Newsom, folks, he's debating Ron DeSantis and you would think... I mean, I would hope Ron DeSantis would annihilate Newsom in that debate, considering they literally just squared off California versus Florida. We've seen Florida and, and their opinion of DeSantis and all the people moving into the state and DeSantis sticking up for his people's rights and saying, no, we're not going to shut down. We're not, we're not going to just be brain dead. We're going to save people's businesses. And he gets rewarded with a 20 point victory. Meanwhile, Newsom completely shuts everything down and, and people flee the state and they end up having a very similar death rate when it comes to the pandemic as Florida. The restrictions were a total joke. So I would expect, and then he got recalled on top of that. So and then they say, oh, it's only 15 to 20%. It's just because nobody likes Newsom. That's why he got recalled. I, I mean, so I would expect DeSantis to destroy Newsom in the debate. And then that should just end Newsom's chances here in 2024. And, and they're going to have to go with Biden. Maybe they'll pull a Michelle Obama out. I think it depends on his health overall. But certainly, guys, there is going to be more legal stuff, obviously, with Trump. They're setting the hearing, the court date, the day before Super Tuesday for the Republican primaries. It's going to get really ugly. So this is like the calm before the storm, and things are looking pretty good for Trump right now, but they are going to try and railroad him. I do think a lot of independent, independent people are done with mainstream media. They really don't care what mainstream media says. Tomorrow, CNN, I'm sure, is going to come out with a headline, Trump's Hitler, he's terrible, blah, blah, blah. It's the boy who cried wolf. We've heard it 5,000 times. That's why I think independent people right now are looking at this and asking the Democrats, do you think we're stupid? There's just no way we can vote for Biden. He can't form a sentence. He can't talk. If we gave him an IQ test, he would be in the 80s right now because he doesn't have that quick thought at this point. His brain function has deteriorated and it's a complete joke. So, so that's why I think Trump is looking good right now, but he is going to be hammered with some of the legal stuff, the January 6th stuff, the voting, you know, the Georgia, whatever it is. We'll have to see. Either way, guys, that is my current prediction right here about 13 months away. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.